Starting a manufacturing business. How to start a manufacturing business. This video is designed to help you plan and start a manufacturing business. It will walk you step by step through all the essential steps of starting your own manufacturing business. In addition, in the description below this video, you'll find a link to a page where you can download a business plan template in MS Word format. This is a high-quality, full-blown business plan template, complete with detailed instructions, and all related spreadsheets. It will allow you to prepare a professional manufacturing business plan. In building your pathway to profit with a manufacturing business, you need to consider the following questions. What services do I provide? Where is my market? Who will buy? Who is my competition? What is my sales strategy? What merchandising methods will I use? How much money is needed to operate my firm? How will I get the work done? What management controls are needed? How can they be carried out? And many more. Now we are going to help you discover the answers to all those questions. Manufacturing Business Marketing When you have decided what business you want to start, you have just made your first marketing decision. Now you must face other marketing consideration. Successful marketing starts with you, the owner. You have to know your product, your market, your customers, and your competition. Before you plan operations, you have to decide who your market is, where it is, why they will buy your product, whether it is a growth or static market, if there are any seasonal aspects of the market, and what percentage of the market you will shoot for in the first, second, and third year of operation. Your production goals and plans must be based on, and be responsive to, this kind of fact-finding. The narratives that follow are designed to help you work out a marketing plan. Your objective is to determine what needs to be done to bring in, sales dollars. Where and to whom are you going to sell your product? Describe the market area you will serve in terms of geography and customer profile. Who are your competitors? List your principal competitors selling in your market area, estimate their percentage of market penetration, and dollar sales in that market, and estimate their potential loss of sales as a result of your entry into the market. How do you rate your competition? Try to find out the strengths and weaknesses of each competitor. Then write your opinion of each of your principal competitors, their principal products, facilities, marketing characteristics, and new product development or adaptability to changing market conditions. Have any of your competitors recently closed operations or have they withdrawn from your market area? State reasons if you know them. Advantages over competitors. On what basis will you be able to capture your projected share of the market? Below is a list of characteristics, which may indicate the advantages your products enjoy, over those offered by competitors. Indicate those advantages. Analyze each characteristic. For example, a higher price may not be a disadvantage, if the product is of higher quality than your competitors. You may want to make a wish to spell out the specifics of each characteristic, and explain where your product is disadvantaged, and how this will be overcome. Also, the unique characteristics of your product can be the basis for advertising and sales promotion. List of characteristics. Performance. Durability. Versatility. Speed or accuracy. Ease of operation or use. Ease of maintenance or repair. Size or weight. Other characteristics not listed. Distribution. How will you get your product to the ultimate consumer? Will you sell it directly through your own sales organization, or indirectly through manufacturers' agents, brokers, wholesalers, and so on? List your potential customers by name, the total amount they expected to buy from you, and the amount they spend for each of your products. Market trends. What has been the sales trend in your market area, for your principal products, over the last five years? What do you expect it to be five years from now? You should indicate the source of your data and the basis of your projections. This is a marketing research problem. It will require you to do some digging in order to come up with a market projection. Share of the market. 
What percentage of total sales in your market area do you expect to obtain for your products after your facility is in full operation? Production. Production is the work that goes on in a manufacturing business that results in a product. In planning your business, you have to consider all the activities that are involved in turning inputs into products, determine what facilities and equipment you need. Manufacturing operation. List the basic operations which are needed in order to make your product. Materials and supplies. What raw materials and supplies will you need, and where will you get them? What amount of raw material and, or components will you need to stock? Are there any special considerations concerning the storage requirements of your raw material? For example, will you use chemicals which can only be stored for a short time before they lose their potency? Equipment. List the equipment needed to perform the manufacturing operations. Indicate whether you will rent or buy the equipment and the cost to you. Labor skills. List the labor skills needed to run the equipment. List the indirect labor, for example, material handlers, stockmen, janitors, and so on, that is needed to keep the manufacturing operating. If persons with these skills are not already on your payroll, where will you get them? Space. How much space will you need for your manufacturing? Include restrooms, storage for raw material and for products, and employee parking facilities if appropriate. Are there any local ordinances you must comply with? Overhead. List the overhead items which will be needed in addition to indirect labor and include their cost. Examples are tools, supplies, utilities, office help, telephone, payroll taxes, holidays, vacations, and salaries for your key people. How much money is needed? Money is a tool you can use to make your manufacturing business work. Money is also a measuring device. You will measure your plan in terms of dollars. And outsiders, such as bankers and other lenders, will do the same. When you determine how much money is needed to start your manufacturing business, you can decide whether or not to move ahead. If the cost is greater than the profits, which the business can make, there are two things to consider. Many businesses do not show a profit until the second or third year of operation. If this looks like the case with your business, you will need the plans and financial reserves to carry you through this period. On the other hand, maybe you would be better off putting your money into stocks, bonds, or other alternative investments rather than taking on the time consuming job of managing a business. Like most businesses, your new business will require a loan. The burden of proof in borrowing money is upon the borrower. You have to show the banker, or other lender, how the borrowed money will be spent. Even more important, the lender needs to know how and when you will repay the loan. Expected sales and expenses figures. To determine whether or not your business can make its way in the marketplace, you should estimate your sales and expenses for 12 months. Cash flow figures. Estimates of future sales will not pay an owner's bills. Cash must flow into the business at the proper times if bills are to be paid and a profit realized at the end of the year. To determine whether your projected sales and expense figures are realistic, you should prepare a cash flow forecast for the 12 months covered by your estimates of sales and expenses. Getting the work done. Your business is only part way home when you have planned your marketing and operation. Organization is needed if your business is to produce what you expect it to produce. Organization is essential because you, as the owner, probably cannot do all the work. You'll have to delegate work, responsibility, and authority. A helpful tool in getting this done is the organization chart. It shows at a glance who is responsible for the major activities of a business. However, no matter how your operation is organized, keep control of the financial management. In the beginning, the president of the small company probably does everything. It is important that you recognize your weaknesses early in the game and plan to get assistance wherever you need it. This may be done using consultants on an as needed basis, by hiring the needed personnel, or by retaining a lawyer and accountant. Making your plan work. To make your plan work, you will need feedback. 
For example, the year-end profit and loss statement shows whether your business made a profit or loss for the past 12 months. But you can't wait 12 months for the score. To keep your plan on target, you need readings at frequent intervals. A profit and loss statement at the end of each month or at the end of each quarter is one type of frequent feedback. However, the P&L may be more of a loss than a profit statement if you rely only on it. In addition, your cash flow projection must be continuously updated and revised as necessary. You must set up management controls, which will help you ensure that the right things are being done from day to day and from week to week. The management control system which you set up should give you precise information on inventory and production. Simpler the system, the better. Its purpose is to give you and your key people current information in time to correct deviations from approved policies, procedures, or practices. You are after facts with emphasis on trouble spots. Inventory control. The purpose of controlling inventory is to provide maximum service to your customers. Your aim should be to achieve a rapid turnover on in your inventory. The fewer dollars you tie up in raw materials inventory and in finished goods inventory, the better. Or, saying it in reverse, the faster you get back your investment in raw materials and finished products inventory, the faster you can reinvest your capital to meet additional consumer needs. In setting up inventory controls, keep in mind that the cost of the inventory is not your only cost. There are inventory costs such as the cost of purchasing, the cost of keeping inventory records, and the cost of receiving and storing raw materials. Manufacturing operations. In preparing this business plan, you have estimated the cost figures for your manufacturing operations. Use these figures as the basis for standards against which you can measure your day-to-day -day operations to make sure that the clock does not nibble away at profits. These standards will help you to keep equipment time, labor man hours, process time, delay time, and down time within your projected cost figures. Periodic operations reports will allow you to keep your finger on potential drains on your profits and should also provide feedback on your overhead expense. Quality control. Poorly made products cause a company to lose customers. In addition, when a product fails to perform satisfactorily, shipments are held up, inventory is increased, and a severe financial strain can result. Moreover, when quality is poor, it's a good bet that waste and spoilage on the production line are greater than they should be. The details, checkpoints, reports and so on of your quality control system will depend on your type of operation system. In working out these details, keep in mind that their purpose is to answer one question. What needs to be done to see that the work is right the first time? Will you have to do extensive quality control on raw materials? This is an added expense you must consider. Sales. To keep on top of sales, you will need answers to questions such as How many sales were made? What was the dollar amount? What products were sold? At what price? What delivery dates were promised? What credit terms were given to customers? It is also important that you set up an effective collection system for accounts receivable so that you don't tie up your capital in aging accounts. Disbursement. Your management controls should also give you information about the dollars your company pays out. In checking on your bills, you do not want to be penny wise and pound foolish. You need to know that major items such as paying bills on time to get the supplier's discount are being handled according to your policies. Your review system should also give you the opportunity to make judgments on the use of funds. In this manner, you can be on top of emergencies as well as routine situations. Your system should also keep you aware that tax monies such as payroll income tax deductions are set aside and paid out at the proper time. Break even. Break even analysis is a management control device because the break even point shows about how much you must sell under given conditions in order to just cover your costs with no profit and no loss. 
In preparing to start or expand a farming business, you should determine at what approximate level of sales a new product will pay for itself and begin to bring in a profit. Put your plan into action. When your plan is as thorough and accurate as possible, you are ready to put it into action. Keep in mind that action is the difference between a plan and a dream. If a plan is not acted upon, it is of no more value than a wishful dream. A successful business owner does not stop after gathering information and drawing up a business plan, as you have done in working through this guide. Use the plan. Thank you for watching. Please like this video.